My name is Jeff Stevens, and this is Paul Preventer. Hello. And uh, this is what we hope is going to be the first of a series of what we think will be interesting and informative little programs about uh, what we think is a very special resource in our community, and that is our historic cemeteries. And uh, we're both part of a, a brand new group. So, uh, Paul, why don't you tell everybody what the group is, and then we'll do a little bit about ourselves individually. Okay. Uh, we're the Friends of Middleborough Cemetery Committee, and uh, we've been up and running actually for two or three years. We've been working on this, and we became a 501c3 tax exempt organization about a year ago, and, uh, and it's just been an amazing process of learning the cemeteries in the community and the needs within the cemeteries and, uh, and the resources and the people that are buried within the cemeteries. So we have, we have, yeah, we we have our, our richness here. I mean, many of us are kind of a, somewhat aware of the local history. We're actually filming up here in the genealogy room of the Middleborough Public Library, and behind me are row after row after row of informational sources about some of these kinds of things. We can see the the books on Mayflower families right behind me, and there's all kinds of genealogies and all kinds of other resources here. But I tell you, we have another resource, and that is that most of us drive by every day in this town historic cemeteries. And there is information about families and individuals that we think is, is a, a vital part of our historic background, stuff that we just would be so much poorer if we didn't have these kinds of things. And most communities don't have the richness of these resources that, that we have right here. But they are in need of some protection. They are in need of being recognized for the, the rich or historic pieces of our background that they are. So um, with that, Paul, how did you happen to get into this, this cemetery friends group and where did it all start from? Because actually Paul started this along with a, 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 a lady uh, who was not even a Middleborough lady, Rhonda. Right. So. Back, in, uh, back about three years ago, a young lady came to me, Rhonda Roberts from uh, East Bridgewater. Yep. And um, she um, had been cleaning up the Tack Factory Cemetery yeah, right on the Lakeville line, and uh, and she came to me and she said, "We need to do something with the cemeteries of Middleborough," and and, uh, and with some resistance over the you know because I work as a veterans agent for the town, I'm also the person that's um, in charge of the graves of the veterans within the community. So she thought I'd be a valuable asset and an ally in the in the project, and uh, and it turned out you know the more I got to know her and the more that. I got an interest in it, and the, and the more people that got involved, and we you know, learned more people about within the community that had an interest, and all of a sudden we got together and formed this uh, Friends of Middlesbrough Cemetery Committee. And I had a kind of a, a slightly different thing. I was in college at UMass Amherst and took an art appreciation course, and the uh, the professor, among other things, wanted us to do a rubbing of some form. Now, he meant you could go out and do everything from rubbing a, a, a grate to uh, a, a sewer cover. Now, I had happened to know a little bit about historic gravestones, and so I decided to rub a gravestone. Now, I made the mistake of rubbing a gravestone in Boston. I went to the granary. Well, the problem is it's illegal to rub gravestones in the, in the granary. It, is, this is all to help protect the stones. I didn't know that, and as I first started setting up, a man walked up and suggested that I might not want to rub that stone because it was illegal to rub that stone. So then he took me around and showed me all the best stones, which was kind of nice. And, uh, but I did kind of get into the idea of, of doing gravestone rubbings, and you'll see some of my gravestone rubbings today. But it was that. Then I happened to get a job down here in Middleborough, and uh, have really enjoyed Middleborough system. We have some incredibly interesting things that we'll talk about in just a moment about and how that relates to our cemeteries. So it was out of that and then I kind of happened into this whole strange hobby of rubbing gravestones. And some people hear that and think you're, you're robbing gravestones or robbing graves or something. No, it's not exactly the same. It's making a rubbing which is kind of a, a copy of a gravestone. So I've been doing that for 30 or 40 years, one way or another, one place or another. So that's how I got into this whole thing. And um, why don't we shift in talking about Middleborough specifically. What kinds of graveyards do we have around here, Paul? What, what makes our graveyards a little unique? Well, Middleborough, you know, was incorporated in 1669, and which means that we had settlers here well before that. And over the years, you know, people come and people go, and they're buried here and they're buried there. And so these cemeteries 
oftentimes reflect the, the, the total history of the community. Uh, periods of times when we've had major illnesses like you know the um, smallpox epidemics and, and periods of times where families had fem family cemeteries out and about the community and, uh, and it's been an amazing process learning and finding and being involved with all the community cemeteries and the needs within those cemeteries. And we're finding a great variety of different ones. Um, there are single graves with single grave stones around and about this community. And sometimes they're single because of something that happened. There are several smallpox stones. Smallpox stones will give the person's name and dates of their birth and date almost always, but they always say died of the smallpox on them because smallpox was a very significant worry for a community because it would sweep into a community and people would not know quite what caused it but knew it was there and it was very infectious and so they also knew that if you accidentally broke into a, a grave of someone who had died of smallpox that it might start a new epidemic um, and so they always put a gravestone on a smallpox victim's grave and always said right on the stone that the person had died of smallpox so that nobody accidentally broke into that grave but anyway so we go from single graves with stones like that to what I often call family plots. What's a family plot? You kind of referred to it a minute ago. What's, what would be a family plot? Well, uh, like um, the Eaton family has a, um, a family plot of, you know, gravestones for the entire family, uh, usually on the, uh, on the properties that they own. So the farm would have a little place off to the side of the field where they might have the family members as they passed on would be buried. And there are apt to be several stones, often with the same name. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we often call it a, a family cemetery. So there are those family plots that are there. And then Middleborough has some unusually large, beautifully cared for historic cemeteries. Our oldest cemetery is? Oh, the... Um yeah, you, I should Namaskit be on the Hill. Spot. Namaskit Hill. Namaskit, there you go. Namaskit Hill. When the first burials there in the 1690s or so, mm -hmm. and so before then, people were buried and were buried all over town, and they were not buried with gravestones. They were buried with what were called rails, which were wooden posts mm -hmm. with people's names and dates on them. But the wooden posts, of course, over the years and years and years, would fall over and rot away, and so we don't have any. But about the 1690s, late 1690s, when the first gray stones started coming along, but Namaskit Hill was first. Church in the Green Cemetery is another massive colonial era cemetery, much bigger than most towns ever have. So we have those. And then we have a number of others um, that we have found. We keep finding more. So there are people buried all over Middleborough exactly. uh, with sometimes groups around them and sometimes individuals all by themselves. That doesn't even mention the fact that for thousands of years before that there were native peoples who lived and died here and were buried here and were basically unmarked. Exactly. So that all over Middleborough there are locations where people have lived and died and been buried and in some cases marked. Now we are mostly seeing those places now that have stones and have identified cemetery areas and uh, some of these have been lost and buried in the, in the, uh, the backwoods as uh, the fields were no longer cultivated and upgrew the trees around them. And so sometimes we come in and find things. There are some cemeteries that we know existed. We're not quite sure exactly where they are. And uh, in some cases, there were cemeteries without markers. The infirmary cemetery, which was related to the poor farm, we kind of know where it is, but we can't find any markers there, even though we know there were a considerable number of people who were buried there. So Middleborough has a, an interesting variety of them, uh, some lodge, like the Cemetery in the Green and uh, the Namaskit Hill. Namaskit Hill is a wonderful place to see the whole scope of our mm. culture around mm. burials because it goes from way back to modern cemetery practices today. So all of that is it. How about the people who are there? Uh, is that a significant piece of, of our history? Why yeah. should we pay attention to who happens to be buried from 200 years ago? Because it, it's the history of not only our community, but the, the history of our, our nation is reflected right there. And, and you know, and, and when, just when you asked that question, I got the flashing on, you know, downstairs there's uh, Lavinia Warren's uh, picture mm -hmm. and Mrs. Tom Thumb, and, 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 uh, and she's uh, buried here in, in the community, right? I, no. hate, I hate to disagree no, I, with you. I'm sorry, your sister is sister. buried here, okay, and your second husband is buried in town. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Mrs. Tom Thumb was a Middleborough girl, 
and uh, Lavinia Warren. We're just about to have the celebration of our 150th wedding anniversary yeah. that the Historic Society is doing. And she married uh, Stanton, who was Tom Thumb. Mm -hmm. Maid of Honor was, was her sister, Minnie. Minnie. Minnie is the one who was buried at the Namaska yes. Hill. Yep. And Minnie died having a, a, trying to have, give birth to a normal sized baby. She was a, 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 a dwarf midget. Yep. And um, unfortunately, could not give birth to this child and she died. Mm -hmm. So she's, she's buried here. Uh, you know, when you talk about historic things, let me just point to one quickly here. This is, this is an interesting Middleborough stone that I kind of learned about just by, by accident. I was interested in the carver of this stone because this is a very old stone. This is a 17, eight, uh, 17 18 year stone. And um, the carver is a, a man, we don't know his name, but he's called the first Middleborough carver because he cut the, some of the earliest gravestones in Middleborough. And this is uh, actually a little face up here. I don't know if you can make it out too well, but a small face with two eyes and a nose. But this man is named John Morton. And just to tell you again the kind of interesting things you stumble across when you start checking on some of these folks, uh, John Morton obviously died here in Middleborough, but he was born in Plymouth, as is often the case. Our cemeteries are full of folks who came here as the children or grandchildren of often the, the earliest settlers of this area, the, the pilgrims, or there are other folks around and about too, but the, the, the pilgrims very much bought land from the native folk and moved to Middleborough in that second and third generation. And John Morton is a son of a man who came over on the Mayflower, mm -hmm. I think, unless he came over on the end, but one of the very early settlers. John Morton, much to my surprise when I did a little research on him, is credited with being the first public school teacher, which of course I was a school person, so that was kind of an interesting thing. He's credited to being the first public school teacher in the New World. Hmm. And uh, opened a public school available, not a private school, but a public school open to the, to the folk in Plymouth. And then after doing that for a while, moved to Middleborough. Did not start a school in Middleborough, but John Morton, the first public school teacher, is buried here in Middleborough. The kinds of things you kind of stumble across when you start checking into the individual. So we have both uh, a wealth of, of, of material stuff left from those areas and these stones, but also some incredible interesting people who have played a role in the background of our community. You mentioned veterans. Um, I stumbled across an interesting thing. You can see in any of our historic things, how do we mark when it comes to Veterans Day, how do you mark those graves? Oh, we put flags on the, on the graves of the veterans. And he does that for the veterans of all the wars. There are also other markers, and we'll probably do a program at some point or other about the markers that are often set beside gravestones. When you see an SAR stone, for example, what's that? Sons of the American Revolution. So that means that they were served in the Revolution for some period and have been identified that. And you can, we have many, many, many colonial era stones with them, many people who served in the Revolution, and you can tell who those are if you see an SAR stone. And then there's others that will have a, a round marker and says GAR. Which the is Grand Army of the Republic. The Grand Army of the Republic. Grand Army of the Republic is what we called the Federal Forces in the Civil War. And um, I was amazed to hear the number of Civil War veterans that we had in Middleborough. Oh and yes. We lost in in the Civil War we lost over fifty veterans from our community. And uh, that's that's an amazing number, you know, for the the for size. That was small. Yeah, right. For the size of the population. Yeah. I think there were uh, I, I can't remember the exact number that went away to that walk, but uh, of the 50, less than 10 of them actually died of battle wounds. Yeah, most of them died of diseases and other Dysentery, things. Dysentery, many yeah, more. those kinds yeah. of things. Some place, rather, I heard that there were 400 Civil War vets. Yeah, then, and we had 400, um, over 400 World War I veterans. Yeah. yeah. So for a small town, we have connections to these, and we're now about to come to the end, unfortunately, of the Second World War vets. Yeah, we're losing them almost one a week or so, was, oh, was there are more than that? Within our community alone, we're yeah. le losing maybe one a week. And, uh, you know, across the nation, there's thousands dying every day. Yeah. So these folks who serve the country are buried here and their graves, and in many cases, are mocked. And uh, so that we have people who served in the military, and they're very much a, a, a group that we would like to recognize and, and have there. So we have very early settlers, right back to the colonial times. As I said, often the children and the grandchildren of the, uh, the pilgrims moved here, set up shop and as farmers in most cases, and then as industry came along. So we have all that. Now, with those kinds of things, um, 
what problems do our cemeteries face? I mean, we've made reference to some that are, are actually have been lost. Mm -hmm. With, you know, initially when the cemeteries were, you know, family owned, the families took care of them, the families died off and the, the, the um, properties got sold and, and uh, at some point some of these cemeteries still became, were still active with associations that took care of them. Those associations went away and, and, uh, and so they became abandoned cemeteries and, and uh, so when they became abandoned, oftentimes, as, uh, as Jeff said, you know, the trees grew up and they became wooded and forgotten about and stuff. So we have to reclaim that area so that we keep the history of our community um, alive to our cemeteries. And we're working at identifying them. There are also some new things that come along. Now if we identify an area that is a cemetery that has been lost, there are both state and national registries that mm -hmm. you can use GPS settings and record exactly where these things are and put them into both the, the state and the national registry of these locations and hopefully make it so that we never lose these again. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing that the friends have started to do. When we find a new cemetery or a new, when we find a cemetery again yes. that has been lost to us, uh, one of the things we do is record it and make sure it's, it's not going to be lost again. Mm -hmm. So that's part of what's going on. There are other things too that are, uh, are a sad reality of this, and that is that stones like our friend Morton Stone up here, um, those stones have been standing in his case for you know over th almost 300 years, uh, but they are about to go. Many of these stones are under attack. They're under attack from several things. Um, sadly, acid rain and the changes that we brought about with industrialization mm -hmm. attack these stones in a new way. Along with that, we have some other changes. The lichens and mosses start growing on our old stones. And these old stones, the lichens especially, actually create an acid and eat into the, into the stone. So that many, many, many of our historic stones, and those are mostly the slate stones, which is the ones I'm predominantly mm -hmm. interested in, uh, but the ones that go from about 1700 through, in most cases, about 1810 or 1815 or so. At 1850, most of our stones became white marble stones that were brought in. The Middleborough stones of that colonial time were done on local slate. And there was a slate field that we think was in East Middleborough, and we don't quite know where it is now, but from some of the things, some of the carvers have left us, we think that was where it was. Anyway, they, it was a nice soft slate, which made it easy to work, mm -hmm. but it means it's a stone that is not standing up over time and we've set them up on end. Slate is a stone that's a sedimentary rock, so it's really made of layers of mud that have been compacted over time. Set them up on end, and over the hundreds of years now that they've been standing, they start breaking apart. Mm -hmm. And they often have flaws in them as well, and they fracture one place or another. So many of our stones are breaking apart. And the carved fronts with the information on them is starting to flake away and fall off and get buried or hurt as we try and take care of cemeteries. Used to do that by hand. Now we come up with a power mower and you hit a stone enough times with a power mower and there's not much left after a while. So I'm sad to say I think we may be among the last generations to be able to walk through a cemetery and see these stones as they were for the last several hundred years. Mm -hmm. So it's important to take care of them and it's important to try and preserve them where we can and all those kinds of things are parts of why these cemeteries are facing some unique problems. Um, what are we hoping as a group, our friends of the Middleborough Cemeteries, have set some goals? Well, what have we set as goals? Um, to, you know, to preserve, to preserve the cemeteries that we've um, got within the community that are abandoned. Uh, the active associations are, for the most part, you know, taking care of things as far as keeping the cemeteries clean and, and uh, keeping up with a number of issues regarding them, but the, the abandoned cemeteries, we're getting them cleaned up, we're uh, in some cases re-fencing them like we did on the Gammon Cemetery, and in other cases we're figuring out the, the monies under the perpetual care accounts for these abandoned cemeteries were held within the town, and that the cemetery associations could only take the, uh, the interest off of the principal and to maintain the cemeteries. So 
we've been successful over the last year to get the monies from uh, from those uh, accounts uh, transferred in such a way through the historical commission to be able to utilize them back into the cemetery to maintain the cemeteries. So we're cutting down trees, we're cleaning the brush away, we're uh, eventually we've learned of products that will help us to clean up the stones. Uh, we've heard of people that have, um, are available to help us to restore the stones as best as we can and to be able to also restore the data on the stones or um, may, uh, not restore them so much as record make sure it, that we record them. And uh, yeah. so that's our, our mission. Gammon Cemetery is, a, is an interesting example of the kind of thing we're hoping to do for more cemeteries. Gammon Cemetery is on Tisfiquin, I believe. Um, Satum Street. Satum, I'm sorry, Satum Street. And um, even neighbors have had said they'd gone past it for years and never even realized there was much of anything there. You could see a couple of fence rails and a little bit of, of fencing, but beyond that, Nobody hardly knew this. The next door neighbors were aware that it was there, but in general, people driving up and down the street would never have been aware that there was a, a small cemetery there, a family cemetery there. And um, we gathered together a little crew and went in and cleaned up the underbrush and the, the poison ivy, which grows very well around here, oh, yes. and um, cut down some of the little trees and uh, pulled it together a little bit, and cleaned it up, and, and even that was a, a, a major boost in the Suddenly people say, oh, look at that, there are stones in there. And there mm -hmm. are about four or five or six stones in there, but still, there were, people recognized it for what it was for a change. The neighbors were pleased to see it up and looking better. Uh, there are some relatives of the Gammonses still in town, and they were very pleased to see it brought back a little bit. Uh, we had another nice thing come along, and that is a, an Eagle Scout was interested in, in perhaps a project, and so he has, has taken on redoing the original fencing that was around, and that's mm -hmm. just about completed. He, it's going to be painted, I think, in the spring, but it's up and, and in place again. Mm -hmm. So now it's, it's made a, a big difference. Uh, we've also done one other thing, and that is that we're trying to uh, bring about better recognition for a place like the Gammon Cemetery. And with that, we've started uh, an, a, an approach to see if we could put signs to recognize these locations so they, again, don't get lost or that people going by have no idea what's there. We have one little thing. You get it? This is just a mock-up of what we hope is going to come, but it's a kind of, of sign that we're hoping to place. This is an image called a soul effigy, and this is an, a Middleborough Cutter's effigy. This is something that was done by a Middleborough Cutter, but it just gives a good, um, the clear way for somebody driving by to identify this as a historic cemetery. We're hoping to do this on about 14 cemetery. We made a grant application to the Community Preservation Act, which is something new for Middleborough. And the Community Preservation Act uh, had us go through the, the process and have approved uh, the funding so that we are in the process of getting these made and over the next year or so, hopefully people will be seeing these around the community. This is again something done by the Friends of the Middleborough Cemeteries, but done in cooperation with the neighbors, because the neighbors have been very cooperative about this and the Community Preservation Act Committee. So another whole part of the process, our first goal of identifying and preserving and protecting mm -hmm. some of our historic cemeteries, because as we say, we're finding them all over town, and uh, this I think is a good example of one that we're making some progress on. Besides just identifying, preserving these places, we have another goal, I believe. And I'm gonna leave that up to you. Well, it says to promote and improve awareness of the history and, and care, and that's somewhat what that is. As I said, we've also had a, a work day or two, and that's another piece of this, where we've had support from community groups. We had a number of church groups. I know the kids from North Congo came out from North Congo in, uh, not North Congo, I take it back, UCC at, uh, in North Middleborough helped us, and some other troops of uh, Boy Scouts came, mm -hmm. and... So last spring we had a cleanup and did a, a number of cemetery cleanups during that time. We'll probably do more of those as the weather improves this spring. Mm -hmm. So we have, have worked on promoting and improving awareness of this and the care of our cemeteries. We're now going to start kind of shifting into trying to find neighbors who may help provide ongoing support for these kinds of things. The other is to preserve and promote the memory of the people who are there. And this kind of gets into the history of that. I mentioned Morton. And there are others. 
like him that have very interesting stories. Why don't I bring over one here? That This is one of my rubbings that I did a good long time ago, but I think we can get it so people can see. How we do? We need to tip it forward like that a little bit. How is that? This is the church on the green stone, okay? And it's a big, this is a very large stone compared to most of our stones. Most of our stones would only be half this height. Later on, as, the sea, as they got further on, they got higher. But this man was probably one of the most significant citizens of his day. And um, with that, he got a very impressive big stone. But uh, when we say the history of these people, this man had a, a, a number of things that happened in his life. and. Um, his name was Sylvanus Conant. He was one of the early ministers on the Church on the Green. Okay. And he was a minister during, the colonial, uh, during uh, colonial times, but right up to the American Revolution. Um, Sylvanus Conant actually encouraged the revolution so that he was an early patriot and it encouraged the, the, the local patriotic fervor. Um, read in the Middleborough history that I think John Adams sat in the congregation one day at the Church on the Green and listened to Sylvanus so Conant. John Adams came and visited there, but while he was there, he listened to Sylvanus Conant preach one morning. But anyway, Sylvanus Conant, the, the minister was perhaps the most educated man in town and among the most significant in town. Now, besides encouraging the local patriots in the American Revolution, he, of course, was... Uh, you know, very sensitive to the needs of the congregation. In 1777, we had a smallpox outbreak. We already mentioned smallpox. Well, Middleborough had a terrible problem because the smallpox broke out. And among the folks who got smallpox, they took them over to a place out on Soul Street that they called the Pest House. And the Pest House was where you isolated people with smallpox because they didn't know that it was infectious. And Sylvanus, being the good godly man that he was, went out to help care for the sick. And immediately, of course, he got smallpox and died out there. So he died and is actually buried, not in the church in the green, even though he has this amazing stone, he's not buried there. So when you read this stone, it tells you a little bit about him. This stone is erected to the blessed memory of that truly evangelic preacher, that amiable pattern of charity in all its branches, the Reverend Sylvanus Conant. Now, I think it's, this is interesting. You know, this is one of my favorite things about gravestones. You think if you're cutting something in stone, you would lay it out ahead of time. Here's his name. All this wonderful stuff about him gets down here, and they didn't fit his name on there. C-O-N-A, and then there's a little an N-T stuck up here. So somehow or other, they didn't quite fit his name on it. You'd think they would get that part. Mm -hmm. But anyway, it's kind of like that plan ahead sign. So he was pastor of the First Church of Middleborough, who died of the smallpox about three miles from hence, where his body lies interred. He died December 8, 1777, in the 58th year of his age and in the 33rd of his ministry. So Sylvanus Conant is the kind of person you can bump into here in Middleborough. He was a local patriot, the most significant person in the community in his day. Uh, strangely enough, he has two cemetery stones, this fancy in-town stone, and he, here's his picture, which is another rare thing for a cemetery stone. You, you don't get portraits on cemetery stones, and yet the only exception to that are ministers and military men. Hmm. So here he is as a minister with his ministerial wig, and he has on a clerical collar. He is such a, a wonderful Christian that he had two angels looking down on him. And so this is a very, very unique and very special stone. But it's a kind of stone that, again, you can find in this town. He has a second stone out where he's actually buried. And again, we mentioned earlier that if you die of the smallpox, you always have a stone that says die of the smallpox. And he has another stone out on the smallpox cemetery on Soul Street. So a man with two cemetery stones, this very special one. But it's a kind of unique kind of history that you can find here. And let people know the, the unique individuals who were, were part of our community and did such interesting things. And you can find that right at the, if you walk into the church in the Green Cemetery over on the right back about five or six rows, you'll find this stone still right there. Mm -hmm. Is it still as readable at this point? It's not as readable as it was when I did this rubbing, which was a number of years ago. So, again, 
How long that stone will last, we'll see, but it's still there right now, along with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of other stones, many of them from the earliest families of Middleborough, many of them from people who were early patriots, significant players in the revolution and other things. So all of that is what's going on. Now, we worked on our goals, we mentioned so it is to emphasize both the historic nature of the people who are here, to preserve the cemetery. Working on our goals, we've gone about Again, trying to speak of some of these interesting people. We also put a little article in the newspaper, which is another way of getting out the word about the people who lived here before us. Uh, I happen to write a little article that gets into the Gazette regularly called Stories in the Stones. I did one on Sylvanus Conant, and uh, I actually do one on John Morton, too. So mm -hmm. some of these folks, as we come across them, we try and let people know who was here before us. So there are a number of ways we work on that third goal of preserving the memory of the people who were interred here in Middleborough. So we've done cemetery cleanups, we're trying to uh, make people aware of these kinds of things, all that goes on. How could people join us, become part of this process if they're interested? Well, we, uh, we tend to meet uh, on the first, uh, second Thursday of the month. On the uh, first, second Thursday, that's... Uh, no, I'll take yeah, that on the second. Second... It is the second Thursday. Thursday that, of the yeah, month. Yeah, yeah. There you it go. is the first, second Thursday of the month. Anyway, you know what I mean. It's the only second Thursday. I know that. I'm giving you a high time, Paul. There you go. We meet on the second Thursday of there the month is. over at the um, American Legion Hall on Touches Row at 7 o'clock. And um, everybody is welcome to attend. Uh, it's, a, it's an amazing meeting. When we formed this committee back a few years ago, it was like, you know, who's going to be involved with this? And we have people like Jeff who has his interest in, in the stones and and, uh, and other places in, re in regards to the cemetery. We have people like the person running the camera who has an amazing ability with uh, doing a lot of the, um, the logo Create stuff logo. And, 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 and things like that. We have people like um, Sue Sherman who you know, is doing an amazing research. amount of research and, and uh, has worked for the mapping service for the country and, and uh, is able to identify where things are uh, even when Things look like they've been lost. We have people that are very good at data stuff, like Chip and and uh, putting stuff. And you know, there's other resources within the within the community that of people that would um, be you know a great benefit to this committee, uh, along with just people that want to be out there working in the cemeteries to restore these. So if you um, get a hold of us uh, by coming to the meetings, also we have our own website. Uh, friends of Middleborough Cemeteries dot org, and uh, that, that Middle Friends of Middleborough Cemeteries is one big long single word, no and spaces, it, and it's spelled the old-fashioned way, which means you know, O U O U G H, and uh, so Friends of Middleborough Cemeteries dot org, um, and uh, and that's also a good place to be able to learn more about what we've done, also to be able to connect with a a number of things both locally and nationally in regards to you know learning about cemeteries. And uh, we accept um, donations through that same website, and uh, and uh, and just coming to meetings. And so there are plenty of ways. If anybody's interested, you can become a regular member or help us when we have one of our clean out days, and those mm -hmm. get publicized in the Middleborough Gazette and also on our website and around it about as best we can. We're also, as I say, hopefully going to be continuing these little sessions where we'll give you a little bit of information about the people who lived and died and are buried here about the cemeteries and how they're organized and how they're done. So watch local channel for our, our local community TV program on cemeteries. We hope to have one about every month or so. And mm -hmm. uh, I think the next one might be about the basic structure and setup of cemeteries because one of the things that I find interesting is that cemeteries and the way they were done in colonial times were very much tied to their religious beliefs. And so all of these things are connected to the way they lived and how they lived. And it gives us some insight into the people and how it was to be a, a, a citizen of Middleborough in 1720. Mm -hmm. So all of that kind of stuff we'll be able to go over and talk about as we talk about the basic structures of cemeteries and some of the information about cemetery stones. Well, thank you, Paul. It's been nice to have you with us and have us have a chance to give the idea of what goes on in our community and what historically we have for one of the wonderful resources that makes our community really kind of unique. So more later. Thank you.